Let's look at some examples of solving problems using complex numbers. And the classical example is called the roots of unity. So essentially, I want to solve the problem z to the n equals 1 for any positive integer value of n. Now, you might start with, say, the problem z squared equals 1. And we immediately know that z is equal to plus or minus 1. And since the order of this polynomial is 2, we're satisfied with the fact that we found two solutions, plus and minus 1. I'm going to use this problem as a demonstration of how to solve the problem using complex numbers. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to rewrite 1 as a complex number in polar form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my complex number as a vector there. And I'm going to notice that r is equal to 1, and theta, in this case, is equal to 0. So that means that this number 1 can be written as e to the i times 0. But that's not the only angle that will take me to the point 1. I could rotate around the entire complex plane. And in fact, I could write this as r equal to 1, theta equal to 2 pi, in which case 1 would be equal to e to the i times 2 pi. But I could also do that with 4 pi, or 6 pi, or 8 pi. And so that's really 1 is equal to e to the i times 2 pi times any integer k. So k here is going to be an integer. OK. So I'm going to actually rewrite this problem as z squared is equal to, instead of 1, e to the i 2 pi k. And now I'm going to take the square root. So z is going to be e to the i 2 pi k all to the 1 half power, or e to the i times pi k. Now, I'm going to solve this. I'm going to figure out what this value is for different values of k. So I'm going to start with k equals 0, in which case z is equal to e to the 0, which is 1. And then I'm going to do k equals 1, in which case z is equal to e to the i pi. And e to the i pi, that is equal to cosine pi plus i sine pi. Cosine pi is negative 1, and sine pi is 0. So there are my two roots of unity. They are 1, which I'll plot on the plane here, and negative 1, which I'll plot here. And so this is how we can solve the problem uh, z squared equals 1 using complex numbers. I will point out that we just saw that e to the i pi is equal to minus 1. And often, people write that as e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. That's often referred to as Euler's identity and is considered to be one of the most beautiful equations in all of mathematics. It takes three or four fundamental concepts, or fundamental concepts in mathematics, fundamental numbers, okay, so 1, e, pi, and i, and combines them so that they equal 0. Okay, so let's use this technique on z cubed equals 1, because if I look at that and I take the cube root, 
I get z equals one, and that's somehow unsatisfactory because this is a cubic polynomial, and so I'm expecting there to be three roots, but in this case, I can only seem to get one root, z equals one. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rewrite one as e to the i times two pi k. But this time, z is gonna be the cube root, so that's e to the i two pi k to the one-third power. And so that is e to the i two pi k over three. Now, I can consider different values for k. k is equal to zero, gives me again that z is equal to e to the zero, which is one. k is equal to one, what is that gonna give me? That's gonna tell me that z is equal to cosine, sorry, let me put it in e first. So it's gonna be e to the two pi over three. And then that is gonna give me the cosine of two pi over three plus i sine of two pi over three. Now the cosine of two pi over three is going to be the square root or minus the square root of three over two plus the sine of two pi over three. You know, I think I've made a mistake here. So the cosine of two pi over three is going to be one half and the sine of two pi over three, sorry, it's gonna be negative one half. And then the sine of two pi over three is going to be square root of three over two times i. Okay, so uh, that's gonna give me k equals one. Now k equals two, that's gonna be give, give me z equal to e to the, now I'm gonna put k equals two in, so that's four pi over three, which is gonna be cosine of four pi over three, plus i sine of four pi over three, the cosine of four pi over three is going to be minus one half. And then the sine of four pi over three is going to be a negative square root of three over two. Okay, so now we can see that the three solutions to this problem are z equals one, z equals negative one half, plus the square root of three over two i, and then negative one half minus the square root of three over two i. So I can plot those points. So here we have z equals one, and then here I have negative one half plus the square root of three over two, and then negative one half minus the square root of three over two I. And what you should notice is that each of these roots of unity are an angle two pi over three apart. And so they're equally spaced around the unit circle. I'm gonna make that just a little bit bigger there for you. Okay, 
In fact, that was actually true with our first two roots of unity, okay? We can see here that uh, each of these were 180 degrees, okay? Or an angle of pi apart. Okay, let's move on to our last example. Z to the fourth equals one. We're gonna rewrite that as Z to the fourth equals E to the I times two pi K. So that Z is actually equal to E to the I two pi K to the one fourth power, which is E to the I pi k over two. We're gonna look at k equals zero, where z is e to the zero, which is one. k equals one, where z is equal to e to the i pi over two, which is cosine of pi over two, plus i sine of pi over two. The cosine of pi over two is zero, so I sine of pi over two is just I, because the sine of pi over two is one. K equals two is gonna tell me that Z is gonna equal E to the I pi. E to the I pi we already saw was cosine pi plus I sine pi, that's negative one. And then finally K equals three is gonna be Z equals e to the i three pi over two. That's gonna be cosine of three pi over two plus i sine of three pi over two. Cosine of three pi over two is zero. i sine of three pi over two is gonna be minus i. Okay, so I'm gonna plot these. That's gonna give me one i negative one and negative i. Notice that each of these is 90 degrees or pi over two apart and they're equally spaced around the plane. Now you might notice that in each case uh, I stopped solving after say k equals two, three, or four. Okay, that is because uh, k equals zero and k equals one give me the only two unique solutions for problem A, okay, if I, if I did k equals two, I would get back to one, and then k equals three would be minus one, So because I, I keep going around the circle again. So I only need to do zero and one. For z cubed, I only needed to do zero, one, and two, because then I'll start repeating solutions. And again, for z to the fourth equals one, I needed zero, one, two, and three, because then I'll start repeating solutions, okay? Now, I pointed out this pattern, okay, that everything is equally spaced by angle. But something else that I hope you noticed is a little fact that if z equals a plus bi is a root of a real polynomial, p of z, okay, meaning a polynomial with real coefficients, then so is the conjugate, z bar equals a minus bi. So when we were solving z cubed equals one, we got minus one half, plus square root of three over two i, but also minus one half minus square root of three over two i. And then we also got i was a root of unity for z to the fourth equals one, but also its complex conjugate minus i.